Hello boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Folks Bro. I don't know what day of lockdown it is, I couldn't be bothered to look. All I know is it's Saturday morning on the 30th of May, which is next, or well, coming Friday. We are supposed to be going into stage or level 4 of um, a lockdown. I actually hit the luck, um, nice and clear. I was uh, having a look at my brewing supplies to see because i've run out of beer and i thought well maybe i should brew some beer and whatever because i don't know when they're going to lift the uh, lockdown on booze and as i was unpacking my brewing equipment i came across a whole bunch of beer about four cases of beer that i brewed a long time ago anyway this is one of my very early beers it's a uh reaper man's vice oh, i had a a penchant for naming things after Terry Pratchett's, uh, after Terry Pratchett's characters. Uh, it's the Reaper Man's Vice, uh, 69 BC Bavarian wheat. Uh, 69 BC was the brewery name I had at the time. Um, it was actually brewed on the 21st of June, 2014, the date. Uh, 5.2% ABV, and I've just cracked it. Okay, obviously, it was very carbonated and very clear. Hmm. No oxidation at all. If I remember correctly, this was brewed from a kit, so it was a can of uh, malt. So no oxidation, but... Uh, Definitely not bad. Hmm. Anyway, today on the bench I've got a a Cytec battery charger. A friend, a colleague of mine uh, bought this to me and I've been putting it off and I've run out of things to repair. So eventually I dug this out as I was cleaning up my uh, workroom. And I thought, well, let's have a look at this battery charger. What can, what can go wrong with it? Um, so let's set up the bench camera and then we will take it from there. All right, so here we are on the bench, and uh, this is how I received this uh, battery charger. As we can see, it's a Cytec MXS10, 12 volt, 10 amp output, and it's got a whole fancy, nice charging pattern, so it'll have some smart charging chip for it. Ah, oh, nice, very fancy. Interestingly enough, what we can see, remember, this is how I got it. There's a nice big black mark there. And that black mark will go over those capacitors. And what you can see is that they are bulged. You can see the bulge on them. So those capacitors are definitely gone. Clearly, my friend had a go at repairing this because that's where the fuse was. That's obviously blown. So, in, in his wisdom to fix it, he put uh, this little modification on a little chocolate block with a, a fuse inside. Not a huge, not the nicest way of doing it, but anyway. <coughs> oh, that inductor hanging there in the breeze, you can see that. So clearly they didn't uh, decide to hot snot it properly. Yes, I also managed to get my hands on some cigarettes. Luckily, when we're coming out of this lockdown, uh, we will be able to buy cigarettes in the next couple of days. So anyway, if we look at our circuit coming in, there's really not a lot to it. Some mains filtering here, a little ferrite over the live and neutral, live and neutral comes in a little varista MOSFET ach not MOSFET metal oxide varista some safety capacitors so clearly across a line and neutral or line to earth well there is no earth so it must be line to neutral in this case because there is only a line and neutral coming in what is this? some sort of NTC or something must be 
we've got our two capacitors so with that bulge we know we have to replace them what are they uh, 47 mic 400 volt okay and in there we've got two little switching transistors let me have a look what they are uh, they are five R two fifty P's. So they are probably MOSFETs of some sort. So filtering, uh, switching MOSFETs. Looks like some sort of thermal fuses down there. Our switching transistor, uh, transformer. And some sort of feedback. Obviously our control chip over there. And then our output stage, some capacitance and the important thing with switch mode inductance lots of inductance there on a nice ferrite coil and what have we got here probably some sort of a, a diode rectifier okay either way we know this is what's caused problems for him if those capacitors have gone the chances of those two Transform uh, transistors or MOSFETs, uh, chances are they've gone as well. So, what I'm going to do, and I'll just do it off camera quickly, is I will just pull these two capacitors and two transistors out, and we can check them out and see if they are really stuffed. Okay, let me just uh, do that off camera. And then we will come back, then you can get a better shot. Right, so here we have our two switching and channel MOSFETs. 5R250Ps. Interestingly, they've put a nice ferrite bead there on pin 2 which is the drain to left to right, pin one your gate, pin two your drain, pin three your source, pin three will normally be tied to ground. As we can see when I took the capacitors out, yes, well they just completely went. So the capacitors will definitely replace uh, Samson never heard of it 47 microfarad 400 volts interestingly they are rated 405 degrees celsius also quite nice you've got your insulation washer on the back but what they did do because this tab will be live they put this little if i can get this out this little insulating grommet that will go through there so the screw doesn't touch right a, a nice touch because if you remember the screw will go right through to the heatsink so they are insulating it from the heatsink which is nice because sometimes they don't do that and when you touch it you get a, a nasty nasty shock so let us test these. Uh, let us test these uh, MOSFETs. The easiest way to do this is to set your multimeter to diode, diode test mode. 
between pin 2 and 3 you will normally have a freewheeling diode or flyback diode in it so between pin 3 and 2 we should get a beep the one way and not the other way so it's measured between pin 3 and 2 so that drain source is fine and if we move it around and we do it the other way come on Craig this is the problem with that that helps if I put it to diet mode So that way we get a beep. The other way is open, which is fine. And obviously gate to source gate to drain must be open. We just do it the other way. Okay. So that fit is fine. We take the other one. We do the same thing. Not even a diode, it's just continuous. Swap it around. Same thing. So this MOSFET is gone. Let's see from the gate to any of the other pins. No problem. So it's only drain source that is stuck. So there's the problem with our charger. Um, yeah, that would definitely cause the fuse to blow. Interestingly enough, let's have a look at the data sheet for the five. Oh, R250, Made by Infineon, they call it a cool MOS power transistors. Uh, ultra low gate voltage. Oh no, sorry, ultra low gate charge. Extreme DVDT, so that's the change in voltage over time. High peak current capability, blah de blah blah blah. Designed for hard and switching switch mode power supply topologies. CCM PFC, in other words, common current mode power factor correction for ATX power supplies, notebook adapters, LCD TVs, PWM stages for ATX, the pulse width modulation uh, stage of the power supply. Okay, a continuous drain current at 25 degrees Celsius, 13 amps. Uh, pulse drain current 31 amp. Okay, that's the maximum rating. So, what is the RDS on? Do they give it to me? Oh, no, no, no. Give me the thermals. Okay, drain source breakdown voltage 500 volts. Okay, the gate threshold voltage typically 3 volts. Okay, the RDS on drain source on state resistance 0.22 ohm. So when it's on, it's really got a, a low resistance, so you'll have a low volt drop across it. Uh, the other stuff is not really interesting. So. What we can see, one of our fits was gone, and I would guess this is a half bridge configuration because there's only two of them. So one to switch the high side, one to switch the low side. And there was our problem plus these two capacitors. So what I will do, the two capacitors came out of there, there two FETs came out there. Obviously it doesn't help to replace only one FET. We would try and get two out of the same batch so that they matched. 
Um, yeah, so what I will do is get um, all the two new fits and we will, when we get them, we'll make a video and we'll put them back together. Other than that, it doesn't really look like there's much on this board uh, on the back side. Uh, some current sense resistors up to a coupler microprocessor of sorts and yeah so nothing really much to this uh, little surface mount LEDs there okay anyway let's set up for the end shot and then uh, yeah Right, there you have it, boys and girls. Another episode, another repair we can't complete because we haven't got uh, spares and I didn't even really get to drink much of my beer. So actually, the clarity is superb. Carbonation, very nice. The thing with these, uh, it's not much to a battery charger, really, if you think of it. The things that can go are the things that work hard. In this case, it's typically the capacitors and the switching MOSFETs. I do like what they've done in there. They've paid attention to detail. Uh, the point of the ferrite beads on the drain is obviously they are scared of switching noise, so they're filtering it. Uh, there's some very good videos on the internet about this. It's also got to do with slew rate um, so that they make sure that the things switch when they need it to, to switch. Uh, the capacitors obviously went, they go with temperature and time, and especially if they worked hard. Anyway, we'll order the, the stuff from RS Components, we'll see if it gets delivered. And until the next time, uh, take care, be safe, stay home. Cheers.